Time now for French Connections, our weekly look at the intricacies of life here in France with Florence Villeminot. Good to see you, Flo. Now, this week, we're going to focus on one of France's most famous historical figures, Napoleon Bonaparte, 2021, marking the bicentenary of his death. But 200 years on, his legacy remains controversial, and there's been a fierce debate over how and even whether to commemorate. Uh, Absolutely. Napoleon Bonaparte, it's kind of hard to boil him down into just a five-minute show. We're not going to get into all the dates and all the battles, but what's interesting is to see what Napoleon means to the French today. Now, for some, the famed Corsican was a military genius who brought France grandeur and glory mm. on the international stage and really represents everything that France has lost since then. But for critics, he was a racist, misogynistic, warmongering tyrant who has the blood of hundreds of thousands of soldiers on his hands and is kind of the caricature of French decline. But whatever you think about him, France's last national dictator is one of French people's favorite historical figures. He certainly is. According to a recent study, a majority of French people say that he best represents French history ahead of King Louis XIV and ahead of Charles de Gaulle. So quite an important figure here in France, but also an object of fascination abroad, whether it's people who collect memorabilia, they go for, it's very, very expensive to get anything that Napoleon touched. Also people who participate in these historic reenactments. The legend of Napoleon certainly lives on. Moi, je le compare un peu à une rock star. 200 ans après sa mort, on en parle toujours. C'est un personnage universel. Parce qu'il incarne au fond quelque chose de, de très moderne et qui est un peu le, le rêve de tout le monde. C'est-à-dire d'aller au-delà de, de soi-même, de réaliser des choses incroyables. Et lui qui venait de, de si bas, eh bien il est monté plus haut que n'importe qui au cours de l'histoire. Now, Flo, before we get into the more controversial aspects of Napoleon's legacy, Napoleon Bonaparte did contribute massively to the modern French state, didn't he? France really owes a lot to Napoleon. Remember, the man who overthrew the First Republic and crowned himself emperor. So just to name a few of the things that we owe uh, to Napoleon, well, there's the French uh, baccalaureate, for instance, the end-of-year high school exam here. Uh, there's also the Central Bank, the country's highest civilian award, the Legion of Honor, and there are also quite a few beautiful monuments as well, like the Ark of Triumph you just saw. Now, he was also behind something called the Code Civil, which is our expression du jour. It's a big red book uh, that was the basis of the French legal system. So uh, a lot of French law is still based on what was called the Napoleonic Code, but it wasn't all progress. It actually rolled back the clock for women, for instance, who had managed to gain a lot of rights in the first years of the revolution, uh, well, following the revolution, and, well, that kind of went backwards with Napoleon. A married woman suddenly found herself in a powerless position in society. In fact, she couldn't do anything without her husband's permission. She can't go to court without her husband's permission. She can't be a witness. She can't take an exam, get a passport. She can't work without her husband's permission. And moreover, when she does have his permission, it's him who gets the salary. So she doesn't have any more rights than a child. Now, there's a big uh, dispute raging in France over how Napoleon should be remembered in the 21st century, with much of the debate now focusing on his reintroduction of slavery to islands in the Caribbean and the Indian Ocean. Absolutely. Napoleon Bonaparte re restored slavery uh, by decree in the French Caribbean colonies. This was in 1802. So this was its after its post-revolutionary abolition in 1794, and it was only re-abolished again in 1848. Now, in the wake of the Black Lives Matter movement, this aspect of Napoleon's legacy really has been in the spotlight. And in the age of cancel culture, some people are wondering, well, should we cancel Napoleon? There's been a heated debate amongst historians especially over whether it's fair to judge Napoleon by today's ethical standards or whether his actions should be seen in the context of French history. Napoleon restored slavery for economic reasons, essentially to control sugar in the Caribbean. And when I say that, I don't mention the human aspect of all of this. But at the time, those questions weren't raised. That's regrettable. But we can't go back in time 200 years and tell them that's not how things are done. The 1802 law was actually discussed at the time, before the legislature and the tribune, and about a third of representatives spoke against the measure. So we can't say that everyone was in agreement.
Now, Flo, while many f uh, former French presidents have sort of avoided this hot potato over Napoleon's legacy, Emmanuel Macron seemed to grab it with both his hands. He certainly has, which is interesting because a lot of people actually draw parallels between Napoleon and Macron. Macron is France's youngest leader. Since Napoleon, he kind of came out of nowhere, got to the top. He has big ambitions about Europe. He wants to make a mark, uh, lasting mark on France. Unlike other presidents, Macron decided to lay a wreath at Napoleon's tomb uh, and said it was actually important to look at French history in the face, warts and all. De l'Empire, nous avons renoncé au pire, et de l'Empereur, nous avons embelli le meilleur. Sans céder jamais à la tentation du procès anachronique, qui consisterait à juger le passé avec les lois du présent. Now, critics say this is classic Macron not really wanting to make up his mind over controversies, trying to forge a middle way, all the while trying to woo voters on the right ahead of the uh, next presidential election. In any event, Macron certainly has stepped into the heart of kind of a culture war here in France and a much wider debate about controversial historical figures and how to remember them, commemorate them, condemn them, celebrate them. It's a big debate. Or not talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for that, Flo. Flo will me know there. That's all we have time for in this edition. In the meantime, you can tweet your questions to Flo at Flo Vilmino and check out our website, France24.com.